Over the weekend, Iran launched at least 300 missiles and drones towards Israel in order to retaliate against the Jewish state for an attack carried out against them on April 1. This strike from Iran was considered a military failure as Israel successfully intercepted 99% of the drones and missiles by shooting them down mid-air. While a military base was damaged and a child was injured, it was overall a successful outcome for Israel. The success can be solely attributed to Israel's Iron Dome, a mobile all-weather air defence system that has been protecting the country since 2011. So what is this piece of technology and how does it work to protect the country? Here to chat through it with us is Harley Lippmann from the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee and Middle East Partnership for Peace. Harley, in layman's terms, can you explain to us how exactly the Iron Dome works? So try to visualize that there are three trucks in an area, and that basically is one Iron Dome unit. So one truck is focusing on radar, and that's how it tracks an incoming missile. Then there's a second truck that interprets it, that assesses the trajectory and where the impact is. And this is all done in seconds. And then the third truck next to it, or van, then has the missile itself, called the Tamir missile, and fires it. The missile goes up and explodes near the incoming missile, not on it. Holly, we obviously saw that Iran was attacking over the weekend, as I said, but if the entire Middle East hypothetically were to be pointing their missiles at the Iron Dome, could it still handle that amount? No. That's the one weakness of the Iron Dome. It could be overwhelmed. So an Iron Dome, a typical unit of Iron Dome, has four batteries that each have up to 20 missiles. And it can be overwhelmed. But the main theme that I want to convey to you, which is what makes the Iron Dome most distinctive, is that let's say it's designed to cover a city or a town. Just visualize a bubble over that town. It covers the entire town. And the good part is, let's say it assesses the trajectory as missing the town. Then it ignores it. This way, the incoming missile tends to explode harmlessly in some field or somewhere outside the protected area. Mm. So obviously there's work to kind of, you know, to make it more effective, I guess, uh, for larger scale missiles, uh, if it were to be multiple countries firing. But it, could you say that it was an effective tool against future attacks? Very effective tool because it was able to stop uh, virtually every missile that was coming in. It was originally designed to be what they'll call anti-mortar, anti-rocket, anti-artillery. And then they discovered that it was even more effective against incoming missiles. But there are two other systems that Israel has when you're getting to higher range ballistic missiles. It's called the Arrow and David Sling. So, so those come into use. Those are Israeli-created anti-missile defense systems. But when missiles are coming in from the outside the Earth's atmosphere, those systems kick in to protect Israel, and we utilized as well. The Iron Dome took out, though, most of the incoming missiles that were coming from Iran because they're incredibly accurate. The radar is extremely precise. The technology is extraordinary, and, and as I said earlier, it's able to then track how fast it's going and where the impact is. It's able to assess that, which is another rare and distinctive aspect of the Iron Dome. Mm. And then, then they fire the missile that explodes near it. So that's how it works, and uh, it has been invaluable for Israel. The other thing I'll mention about the Iron Dome is that it's an entirely defensive system. It, there's nothing in it that's of offensive use. I say that because some uh, groups that don't like what Israel's doing in the Middle East, they, they say that the United States should stop funding the Iron Dome uh, for Israel. And the defense of the reasons to continue supporting uh, Israel's purchase and um, use of the Iron Dome is that 
it's it's entirely defensive. It cannot be used for offensive purposes. Mm. So, well, on that note, if, you know, a foreign enemy were to look at, you know, I guess even stealing the Iron Dome, can it be, can it be easily used in their area? Can they literally pick it well, up and take it and use it? Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, if they could figure it out and that you have to be careful that the enemy never gets a hold of that so, mm -hmm. so they can do that. But Israel has enough right now, but it's very costly. One Iron Dome unit with those four trucks that I described, uh, where each could carry 20 missiles, that cost $100 million. Yeah. So it's very expensive. So you have a cost issue and you have a limitation issue. Now, that said, the Israeli military leaders and American military leaders are keenly aware of the weaknesses of the Iron Dome, and they're consistently upgrading it. So they are keenly aware of the risk that they could be overwhelmed. That's mm. the biggest concern that Israel has in using Iron Dome. So they're, they're busy working on countermeasures and uh, they're improving all the time. Mm. So it will be improved, you know, uh, kind of urgently, I guess, now, now that Israel is, yes. you know, more in the forefront of more enemies. Well, I think Israel would still be in trouble if Hezbollah fired all its rockets and they have a huge amount they could fire 20,000 rockets in one day. Iran could fire rockets. There are five nations that have targeted Israel, from the Houthi in Yemen to Syria to Iraq, Lebanon, and even Hamas still. Uh, it, it can reach a point where it can overwhelm Israel. Now, again, that said, the Israeli military leaders are keenly, keenly aware of that, and I'm sure they're trying to do everything they can to address that challenge. Harley, how far in advance can the dome detect rockets and missiles entering Israeli airspace? You know, is it within the tens of thousands of kilometers? How how far away can oh, they? Oh, about see? a little over, a little over a hundred kilometers. Okay. And and how does the technology decipher between whether or not the incoming projectile is actually a security threat? Well, that's where the radar picks it up. And then, you know, there are soldiers that manage that radar station. And then when the radar picks it up, it immediately goes to a command and control center that has elite officers with all their modern technology, and they're assessing exactly approximately impact, which they could figure out to an extremely uh, precise uh, point. And then they're, they're figuring out then where to fire it, so it explodes next to it, and the debris is what they're always worried about, so that debris, tend, and they're firing it in such a way so it limits debris mm. over any any uh, populated area. So but that's how it works. It's, yeah. Oh, well, I just want to get back onto yeah, that point that you've just made. I, I wonder how you kind of minimize that damage on the ground if you're obviously exploding, you know, a rocket in the air how can you be 100% sure that the debris is far from hitting civilians and infrastructure if it was, you know, meant if it was aiming for that? Well, you can't. Mm. And that's why there was one serious uh, um, injury, a fatality in Israel. Uh, sadly, it was a um, Arab Bedouin girl, a young girl, who was hit by uh, some of the debris. But given how populated Israel is, and given all the debris that fell, that was the only damage. So that that's a, a good signal. That said, uh, certainly Israel is at risk. If it, if these are knocked over Tel Aviv or Jerusalem, you'll have a higher risk of damage and injuries from the debris. But it's not considered that significant. The real danger is to make sure you knock out the missile in the air. Mm. That's where the greatest damage will occur, is if the missile actually hits its target. And again, what makes the Iron Dome so unusual is that it's able to give that protective bubble over a strategic site like an airbase or over a populated uh, location like a town or a city. And it will really protect as if you could imagine a bubble over a town, that bubble literally makes that town virtually impenetrable. Mm. So that's where it's done uh, quite a remarkable job in protecting sites in Israel. 
Is it safe to say the the Iron Dome, you know, this piece of technology is Israel's biggest protector, even with, you know, boots on the ground, even with the IDF doing as much as they can? Yes, without a doubt, I would say it's probably the most significant aspect of its defense system. But keep in mind, even though Israel did do a remarkable job in knocking out incoming missiles from Iran, uh, which really speaks to the sophistication and the effectiveness of Israel's air defense system, they couldn't have done it alone. Remember, the United States, France, England, and even Jordan and Saudi Arabia joined in to help Israel. Mm. So again, while Israel pound for pound is arguably the best, perhaps in the world even, they are still a small nation and they still need help from other nations. Iran is eight, nine times the size of Israel and they're extremely sophisticated in their missiles and drones. And what happens after any conflict is that the intelligence agencies of both sides are now using whatever data they are picking up from this to figure out now what happened, how, how can we do better? So the Iranians are now going to try to figure out if they have to fire again, how are they going to be more effective in causing more damage in Israel? Harley, getting into those allies you're speaking about, obviously under the Obama administration, the US helped Israel fund the Iron Dome uh, operational by 2011. What do you think occurred in those initial conversations about the investment in this machinery from the US side? Uh, the, the whole idea then uh, was a good premonition to what would occur later. And that is where Israel is vulnerable, like we saw in Ukraine, is from incoming missiles, uh, uh, ballistic missiles, rockets, drones. This is the new uh, weaponry of warfare in the future. Uh, Iran itself has a very, very weak conventional army. So this is where they excel. So the threat of attack from Iran has been there for a very, very long time. And Israel and Iran have been fighting each other. It's just been a shadow war. It's been a covert war. Now, uh, you know, the, uh, it, it's an overt war. It's just, it's now in the open and there are no more red lines anymore. So that presents another whole damage. But the main theme of the Iron Dome was precisely to protect Israel from attacks from whether it be Hamas, because the Iron Dome was used very effectively. It, it stopped 97% of the rockets coming from Hamas. And even when Hamas was not firing into Israel from Gaza, but another organization called Islamic Jihad was doing it, it was 95% effective in stopping the rockets. So it has an extremely high success rate. Mm. How involved is the U.S. to this day in the Iron Dome? Obviously, they helped fund it, but that was, you know, over you know, nearly 15 years ago. But as last week's strike saw Joe Biden come out and saying the US had actually helped Israel take down nearly all the drones and missiles. So I, I wonder how involved the US is in, the, you know, the operation now. The United States has been very involved. Uh, I think what made this so effective in terms of Israel stopping the missiles coming from Iran was that it was extremely effective teamwork as a coalition, which I think is one of the hopeful signs of the future that nations could get together and as a unified force say to an aggressor, this will not stand, we're not going to have this, and they could be very effective. Holly, just finally, would you be surprised if the Iron Dome or, you know, a technology similar to it would be implemented into Western countries, just seeing how successful it's been in Israel? It already is. Uh, my understanding is that countries in Europe like Poland and others have already purchased uh, a lot of Israel's air defense system. What about you know, the United created... States? The United States as well. You know, this has proven to be there's nothing better than the learning experience of, of uh, a battle to see what works well and what doesn't and then how to improve on it. Mm. Nothing is more important than practical experience when you're dealing with uh, advances in making missile systems better. So yes, the Iron Dome is also in the United States. It's in certain countries in Europe, and especially given how well it's done recently, it's gonna be in high demand in uh, many countries all over the world. Holly Lippman, thank you so much for your time today.
my pleasure. Thank you for having me.